Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, I bless God for your lives. Now, there are some of you who listen to this broadcast without fail. And I get your feedback. Thank you. You see, the Lord is building an army in these last days. And it's important that you know that number one, your heart is open to truth. And number two, you know, John wrote about these things. He says, I'm so glad when I hear that your children are walking in the truth. Because even in their day, many people have begun to go astray, following all manner of doctrines and, and, and teachings. But in the midst of all that, there is still truth. And there are still those who walk in the truth. And walking in the truth means walking silently. Because the truth is scarce. The truth is not common. It's not common everywhere. It's scarce. So when you find it, hold on to it dearly. Because that's what's going to guide your life and make your life better. See, we share these things for one purpose, that your life will be made better. And because God loves you, he's, he's watching out for you. Praise God. Before going to today's broadcast, I have a lot to share with you today. Can we make demand for our daily bread? Join me right now. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Our team scripture for this month is John chapter 8 and verse 31. Striking words from Jesus. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believe on him. I'm reading the old King James now. He says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And I told you continuing here means obey. He didn't say continue reading. You will know the truth. No. See, we know the truth by the activity we engage in. That's what, you see, because truth will not just be thrown at you. I told you, you don't discover truth. It is revealed to you. And what will make him reveal truth to you is by your continuous probing. So when you are a doer of the word, you will get to a place of challenge. Okay? And it's in that place of challenge. And this is the experience of everyone who, who have found truth. See, it's in your process of challenge and, and try to understand things. You begin to question things. That truth is revealed to you. Yeah. Truth is not discovered. It is revealed. And for it to be revealed, you must continue in Him. You continue in obedience. You continue in obedience. You, you now, you don't, you, you don't obey blindly. No, 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 no. You don't obey blindly because you, you, you have created a rational being. So asking questions is right. Asking questions is right. See, you have been given the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said he will guide you into all truth. To guide is not the same thing as to tell. See, you can tell by, you can guide by telling. But it's not every telling that is a guidance. So when it comes to knowing the truth, it happens when we continue with him. So Jesus tells us something. We obey him. And let me tell you this. Every command that the Lord has given. First John tells us for his commands are not grievous. Because whatsoever is born of God. So it is not grievous for those who are born of God. But I tell you the truth, it is grievous for those that are not born of God. If you're not born of God, you can't keep the word of God. You can't keep it. You can't keep it. And, and <clears throat> Jesus made a statement. Say, if any man will obey, and do his will. That man will understand the doctrine that it is from God. 
Hmm? Yeah. If any man will do his will, if any man will do his will, that person that is doing his will will understand the teachings that they are from God. The challenge we're having most, most, with most people today is they are beginning to doubt if these teachings are from God. Why? Because they are not doers. You can't be a doer. You can't be a doer. You know, and, and, and this is why having pastors and mentors is very important. See, very important. Having people who teach you. But you see, you must trust God to have the right teachers in your life. Because if the people who teach you are they themselves ignorant, you'll be in a big problem. Spiritual manifestation is wonderful, but it's not as important as walking in the truth. Several examples we've seen from scriptures. And sometimes we're not careful about these things. We, we, we look at the story, we're excited about it, but then we don't know how to place them side by side with our lives or with other stories that have to do with our present day. All these things were written for our learning. All the stories you read about from Genesis, every story you read about, they are all written for our learning. Every action of, of theirs. That's why the Bible is so plain. It tells you the good, the bad, and the ugly. It tells you everything that happened. Today, they may exclude some parts. If, if the Bible is going to be written today, if, if the just like we have biographies written today about different men of God, you know, they deliberately edit some part or they remove some part in the story. Why? Because they don't want to see, make people feel that this this great prophet was was fallible. You see, they want people to just believe that he's, he's infallible. He cannot fall. So they'll maintain that respect. But when you do that, you're making people have false hope. Now that's the danger of such a thing. You're making them believe that. So, so when they when they, they themselves are in a challenge, they will think something is wrong with them because the people they look up to never have challenges. So sometimes it's important we tell people the way it is. If you have overcome a challenge, you say, look, I overcome this challenge. Don't just make people feel you're so fantastic. There is no error in your life. And people who see the error in your life try to protect. Now, understand what it is to show honor to a man. But you see, you, you, if you don't handle such things properly, you do great damage to the next generation. Yes. We have a lot of people, young people in ministry who are going to hit the rock. And I'll tell you why. They have the word of God in their mouths. They are anointed by God. But you see, they've not been subjected to the rudiments of living life. They don't know the truth about life. There are those who just think, I'll just spend the rest of my day preaching, 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 preaching. I'll have no time for any other thing. But then they forget that the people God wants you to save, first of all, what are you saving them on to? See? So you teach that there are, there are people who teach on marriage and their marriage is a wreck and nobody knows they cover it up but they come out and speak so wonderfully but their marriages their wives will not say see even sometimes the husbands will not say what they are going through and so people watching them think ah wow these people are so fantastic and people very close to them who look at them are like, these people are hypocrites. And, and so the challenge is those people who are close to them, when they break out, they become worse people. It takes the grace of God for them to still have a sane mind. Because you know how it is. You see, sometimes 
you know, as 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 ministers, we've got we've, we've had to deal with um, people who have been in abusive relationship, abusive marriages, and sometimes even abusive relationships with their pastors. Okay, and when I say abuse, wrong relationships, right? sexual relationships, and in counseling those people, we, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. You see, because sometimes you see, people just think, oh, because this man did this thing wrong, or he did wrong to me, God should punish him. But God doesn't work that way. When God judges, he judges everybody. <laughs> no, no, no. He judges everybody. And even you that is thinking you were wrong, God can judge you as foolish. Why? Because there are times you took decisions in that situation. Now, you know, oh, Pastor, you don't understand. Hey, just don't be foolish in life. Just don't be foolish in life. If you have found yourself foolish before, wake up. It doesn't mean God hates you. No. But if you're foolish in life and you continue to be foolish in life, it will cost you your life. Abel was a very good man. He loved God. He gave God a sacrifice. But what happened to him? The bad guy came, killed him. He died. God was angry, but it didn't stop God from showing Cain mercy. I mean, when God was listing out everything that's going to happen to Cain, Cain protested, said, it's not fair. Means that everybody will kill me. God said, no, nobody will kill you. I'm going to place a mark on you so that nobody dares kill you. Imagine, you just killed somebody and you're afraid someone else is going to kill you. Now you think God is going to say, what, why are you afraid of death? Whatsoever a man sows, that's going to reap. But you see, Cain cried, God, no, it, it's too much. God in his nature still put a measure to protect him, a killer. Now, you are on this side. Imagine if you're Cain's younger brother, Abel's younger brother. You are on this side and looking for God's judgment to come on Cain. And he's not coming. Does it mean Cain had gone scot-free? Not necessarily. But the judgment will not come the way you think it will come. So if you let waiting for the judgment to determine the outcome of your own fate, you will end up lost. I'm telling you the truth. Cain still lived a life. He went on and built a city. But hey, God did not walk through the genealogy of Cain. That also is judgment if you don't know. There are things we will never see the judgment until the end of days. We will never see it. So never make this mistake of thinking because someone has hurt you, because a pastor has wronged you. You are waiting to see his church scatter. You are waiting to see judgment come on him. See, you better look for your life in God. And if you say because a pastor has offended you, you don't believe in God anymore. I feel very sorry for you. Because it might even be you never believed in God in the first place. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. If you have been offended, okay, where is the God you believed in before that offense came? Why don't you retrace your steps to him? Why don't you retrace your steps to him? Don't let anybody turn your heart from the true God. God is true. God is real. And sometimes you, an outsider, hearing, you say, can you imagine? Ah, this case is very terrible. Can you imagine what this pastor did to this person? And even as preachers, sometimes you just want to hold it against that person and say, 
that person cannot be walking in righteousness. You see, truth is, every one of us have our assignment cut out by God. And at the end of the day, he will judge us. I can't stand today and tell you someone is wrong, so no righteousness can come out of me. That will be an error on my part. Yes. Because sometimes you don't know what happens behind the scene. You don't know. You don't know. You just never know. So when it comes to dealing with people, deal with them as much as God allows you. You see? Don't follow, oh, ah, even if, you know, someone, oh, even if this person is wrong, ah, but he still carries the anointing, he still carries the, I'll still go and submit to him. You better be careful with all those things. You better be careful. That you're not held in guilt, even where that person is concerned. Your association with someone can cause you problems. So at the end of the day, just make sure you're being led by the Holy Spirit in all things. You see, because it's the Holy Spirit that will be your defender. If the Holy Spirit commands you to associate with that person, then by all means obey him. And when the day comes, because everything comes with an accusation, no matter how you want to obey God, Satan will still bring an accusation against you. And when that accusation comes, let it be that you are obeying the Lord. I was, I was talking to my children you know, recently. The time we have with them you know, to share life situations and, and things with them. So I said to them, I said, if you're going to be obedient to God, you've got to first of all learn how to obey your parents. And one of them asked this question, he said, what if you find yourself in a situation where your parents tell you to do what is wrong? I said, okay. Now, I, that, I, I understood their question. And you see, when you talk to children, you have to be careful to lay truths properly for them. So, now, it's easy to say, then don't do it. Now, when you say, don't, my children are that intelligent. When you say, if your parents tell you to do what is wrong, don't do it. You say, but that's disobedient. That's the next question they are going to say. That's disobedient. What are they trying to tell you? They are trying to tell you that this thing you're telling us is not practicable. That's where they are driving at. So when they ask that question, what if you have a situation where your parents are telling you to do what is wrong? <laughs> I had to ask the Holy Spirit, Lord. <laughs> okay. I, I need because see when you deal is, is in all things we depend on the Holy Ghost. Don't say that's a simple question. Are you 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 can't you just answer? No 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 no. Because see, I'm thinking how this answer is going to affect them ten years from now. So I've got to answer what I can defend ten years later. So I said to them, I said, learn not to be disobedient at all. And concerning your question, this is the answer. When you have parents who are telling you to do what is wrong, then you have to go to a higher parent. And that is where God comes in. And so what do you do? You go before the Lord and say, Lord, this is what my parents are telling me to do, but I think it's not right. What should I do? I said, don't forget to ask that question because that you're not just reporting your parents. And then you're saying, oh, my parents are telling me, oh, Lord, I don't want to do it. Please protect me. No, you will be walking in this. And when God judges, he will judge you as disobedience. I said, you must ask God, what should I do? Then God will tell you what to do. When God tells you what to do, you have an opportunity to obey one who is higher than your parents. So you only step up your obedience. You did not disobey. And then I asked them, I said, when you obey God, 
Will he defend you? He said, yes. So when your parents ask you, why didn't you obey them? What do you say? He said, I was obeying God. My time is up. Praise <laughs> God. I know it's not a good place to stop, but we'll continue tomorrow. You are blessed today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.